Domine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Dominus Pobiscum. Et cum Spiritu Tuo. Greetings, dearly beloved in Christ. I welcome you to this Eucharistic celebration coming to you on Royal Roots Television from St. Dominic's Catholic Church. Today, the church in Nigeria celebrates on October 1st, Our Lady, Queen and Patroness of Nigeria. The Catholic Bishops' Conference, having committed our country, Nigeria, to the maternal intercession of Our Lady, invites us all on this occasion of the 63rd anniversary of this country to pray for peace, to pray for unity, to pray that love will dwell in the hearts of all men and women, and that like Our Lady, Mother of the Church, and the model Christian, we may serve the Lord faithfully. For the times we have failed to be all this. For the times we have not loved as we ought to. For the times we have not, like Our Lady, put the love of God and the will of God before all things. Let us ask for pardon and for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
gloria in excelsis Deo. Et in terra passominius, one voluntatis, lava poste, benedici poste, adoramos te, glorificamos te, graciosa de moste, Brought a my own glory unto us, Domine Deus, righteous is, Deus Pater, omnipotent, Domine Fili Unigenitem, Jesu Christe, Domine Deus, Augusta, Filius Patris, with all his begotta, Mondis, Miserere Nobis, with all his begotta, Mondis, Suicide and Regastione, us the joy of honoring Our Lady Queen of Nigeria as Mother of Divine Hope and Communion, grant that with the help of her intercession, we may always walk for peace and reconciliation in this world and come to share the fullness of your grace through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot springs from the stalk of Jesse. A scion thrusts from his roots. On him, the spirit of the Lord rests, a spirit of wisdom and insight, a spirit of counsel and power, a spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is his breath. He does not judge by appearances. He gives no verdict on hearsay but judges the wretched with integrity and with equity gives a verdict for the poor of the land. His word is a rod that strikes the ruthless. His sentences brings death to the wicked. Integrity is the loincloth round his waist. Faithfulness, the belt about his hips. The wolf lives with the lamb. The panther lies down with the kid. Calf and lion feed together with a little boy to lead them. The cow and the bear make friends. Their young lie down together. The lion eats straw like the ox. The infant plays over the cobra's hole into the viper's lyre. The young child puts his hand 
They do no hurt, no harm. On all my holy mountain, for the country is filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters swell the sea. That day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. It will be sought out by the nations, and its home will be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Justice shows flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O oh God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son, your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. In this day, justice shall flourish, and peace to you, the born of he shall rule from sea to sea, from great river to earth bound. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. For he shall save the poor when they cry, and the needy who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and save the lives of the poor. Justice shall flourish in his time and be so peace forever. May his name be blessed forever and endure like the sun. Every tribe shall bless in his name. All nations bless his name. Justice shall flourish in his time. And fullness of peace forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Do not forget that you had no Christ and were excluded from membership of Israel. Aliens with no part in the covenants with their promise. You were immersed in this world without hope and without God. But now, in Christ Jesus, you that used to be so far apart from us have been brought very close by the blood of Christ. For he is the peace between us and has made the two into one and broken down the barrier which used to keep them apart, actually destroying in his own person the hostility caused by the rules and decrees of the law. This was to create one single new man in himself out of the two of them, and by restoring peace through the cross, to unite them both in a single body, and reconciled them with God. In his own person, he killed the hostility. 
Later, he came to bring the good news of peace. Peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near at hand. Through him, both of us have in one spirit our way to come to the Father. So you are no longer aliens or foreign visitors. You are citizens like all the saints and part of God's household. You are part of a building that has the apostle and prophets for its foundation and Christ Jesus himself for its main cornerstone. As every structure is aligned on him, all grow into one holy temple in the Lord. And you too, in him, are being built into a house where God lives in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed is the Virgin Mary, who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. Dominus Vobiscum, Ex Cum Spiritu Tuum, Lexio Sancti Evangelis, Ecum de Matu, Gloria Tibi Domine. After the wise men had left, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up. Take the child and his mother with you and escape into Egypt and stay there until I tell you. Because Herod intends to search for the child and do away with him. So Joseph got up and taking the child and his mother with him, left that night for Egypt where he stayed until Herod had died. This was to fulfill what the Lord has spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. After Herod's death, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph and said, Get up, take the child and his mother with you, and go back to the land of Israel. For those who wanted to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and taking the child and his mother with him, went back to the land of Israel. But when he learned that Achelius had succeeded his father Herod as ruler of Judea, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. There he settled in a town called Nazareth. In this way, the words spoken through the prophets were to be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. Verbum Domine, All over the world, the Spirit is moving. 
all of the world as the prophet said it will be all of the world there is the mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea Glory to Jesus. Reading to our first reading, I find it very interesting that it speaks of a time when that shoot shall spring from the stock of Jesse, on whom the Spirit of the Lord will rest. A spirit of wisdom and insight, a spirit of counsel and power, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. That is the spirit that this shoot that will spring from the stock of JC will bring to the world. His birth will bring about salvation for those who believe in him, those who are baptized in his name. And so we are told in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 that at the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law to redeem those under the law. That is what this should from the stock of Jesse shall bring redemption, salvation for those who believe in him and are baptized in his name. They shall receive the spirit which rested upon the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of insight, the spirit of counsel, a spirit of power and the knowledge of the Lord. That, dear brothers, is what it should be. But unfortunately, the effects of original sin are still so strong within us. Yes, through original sin, death came into the world. Death due to man's disobedience. So that that which was supposed to be the beauty of the world was taken away. We read in this prophecy of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 9 that which will happen when the knowledge of the Lord is truly present. We are told in the preceding verses that the wolf will live with the lamb, the panther will lie with the kid, the calf and the lion feed together and a little boy will lead them, the cow and the bear will make friends. Their young lie down together. The lions will eat grass like the ox. And the infants will play in the cobra's lair, the viper's lair, and the young child shall put his hand there and no harm shall come upon them. Because on this holy mountain, the country is filled with the knowledge of the Lord. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, Christ has come and in the fullness of time to restore that which was damaged, that which was broken. That's what this passage, the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 9 tells us. That the child shall play in the cobra's den or lair and he shall not be harmed. The calf and the lion will play together. And the lion will not feed on the calf. For that is what God intended from the beginning. If we go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 30, the Lord in creating all the wild animals and the wild beasts, the birds of the earth, said they shall all feed on grass and the leafy plants. The lion was not meant to feed on other animals. 
The viper or the cobra was not meant to hurt other animals. But when sin came into the world, death came into the world, and creation was at enmity with each other. And so we see in our second reading, St. Paul is telling us in a letter to the Philippians that Christ's coming is meant to bring unity. It's meant to bring peace. That there will be no distinction between Greek and Jew, between slave and free. For God created us to enjoy his peace. But sin changed everything. And so today the church in Nigeria celebrates the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen and Patroness of Nigeria, the Queen of Peace. The Catholic Bishops' Conference entrusts this nation to her maternal intercession, that she who came at the fullness of time, a woman under the law, born to redeem the one, or rather to redeem those born under the law. Yes, at the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem those under the law. So by virtue of our baptism, we are those redeemed people. We are those people who the spirit of the Lord has descended upon. We are those people who will have the knowledge and fear of the Lord. Like the waters cover the sea. So that the spirit moving and being at work in our lives, we may walk for peace. Sadly, this has not been the case. All over the world and in our country, Nigeria, man has predated on man. Man has killed man. And in our country, Nigeria, we have reached a stage where people now make distinction between free and those they call slaves. Those they call the Osus. Those who are not meant to interact with others. But this is not how the Lord created us. And it is sad that even amongst Christians who feed at the table of the Eucharist that these thoughts exist. It is sad that we now discriminate against each other. God created man and the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that all he created, he created good. Now we have people discriminating against others. Some they call Nyamri. Some they call Kobo Kobo. Some they call Ajokutama Mumi. Some they call Ndiofe Manu. We label and stereotype ourselves. Because we have not allowed the spirit of the Lord, the knowledge of the Lord to be at work in our lives. But that was not what God intended. That is why a young lady, maybe from Ibira land, will see an Igbo man. Or a young lady, Fufu Day, will see an Awusa man. Or a Yoruba man will see an Igala girl and they will see love in each other. This was what God intended. But we have allowed our selfish interests in the name of politics to divide our land. So that a land that was what, once united by people with a common vision had been torn apart. Because of selfish interest in the name of politics. And sadly it is still found amongst Christians. People who come to the altar of the Lord. What has happened to the spirit of God 
we receive that baptism. What has happened to the knowledge and fear of the Lord which the Lord has given to us on the day of confirmation? What has happened to the humanity which exists in each and every one of us? The love we see in each other. The goodness the Lord has put in us. Today, let us ask our blessed mother to intercede for our land. That like her, we may seek above all things to do the will of God. Man, out of hatred, has chosen to want to destroy his fellow man. Such love for power, so deeply seated, that people are ready to kill and maim to occupy political position. Just like Herod, who got rid of infants because he was afraid to lose his kingship after the wise men spoke of a newborn king. We pray that deep, deep-seated hatred, this lust for power, which leads to spilling of blood in our land will cease. We pray that a time will come when the dreams of our forefathers and the leaders of our nation at independence will come to pass. We pray that a time will come when the Yoruba man will live freely without being discriminated against in Igbo land. We pray that that time will come when the house of girl who chooses to marry the Igbo man will not be seen as an outcast by her family. We pray that that time will come when the Igbo man will be able to contest for elections in Yoruba land, I will not be seen as a foreigner. Let us look back at history. The likes of Namdi Azikiwe contested, not in his own home's region. Let us look at a time when this country will know peace. Because those who call the name of Christ will allow the Spirit of the Lord to truly dwell in their hearts. And with the knowledge of the Lord and the fear of the Lord, they will love their fellow men as themselves. This is our prayer for our nation through Christ our Lord. Of 
True sorrow for sin requires a change of heart and attitude. Our prayers today include our will to live out what we believe. For a spirit of penitence in all members of the Catholic Church, we pray, O Lord. For leaders who will speak and act for the sake of others. We pray, O Lord. For men and women immersed in lives of crime and vice. We pray, O Lord. For the mass intentions, thanksgivings, and other remembrances requested for at this mass and placed in front of the altar, we pray, O Lord. Together, let us say the prayer for Nigeria in distress. All-powerful and merciful Father, 
You are the God of justice, love, and peace. You rule over all the nations of the earth. Power and might are in your hands, and no one can withstand you. We present our country, Nigeria, before you. We praise and thank you, for you are the source of all we have and are. We are sorry for all the sins we have committed and for the good deeds we have failed to do. In your loving forgiveness, keep us safe from the punishments we deserve. Lord, we are weighed down, not only by uncertainties, but also by moral, economic and political problems. Listen to the cries of your people, who confidently turn to you. God of infinite goodness, our strength in adversity, our health in weakness, our comfort in sorrow. Be merciful to all your people. Spare this nation, Nigeria, from chaos, anarchy, and doom. Bless us with your kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For an honest effort on our part to consider the other person first, let us talk to the Lord in the silence of our hearts. We pray, O oh Lord. Mary desired above all things to do the will of God. And indeed, she believed that God's promise will be fulfilled in her life. Let us ask her intercession that we may desire to do God's will and believe that his promise will be fulfilled in our land. As we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, look with favor upon our land, Nigeria. Hear the petitions of your daughters and sons who seek to do your will day by day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall be all right, I 
Pray, dear people of God, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, with his offerings the prayers of your people, that through the intercession of our Lady Queen of Nigeria, they may confer on us the gifts of true justice and lasting peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ominous vobis cum. Et cum spiritus tua. Sosum corda. Amen. Gracia gamus dominus deu nostro Digno Christus to man It is truly really right and just that you tear our salvation Always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of Nigeria. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, Brought forth into the world eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him you gave us freedom in a land that is richly blessed with human and natural resources, so that we might serve you, our Creator, with grateful hearts. And so with the angels and all the saints, we sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the gates, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Save us, Savior of the world, for by the cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred, our Diwali Martins, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Thou the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum et cum ipsum et in ipsum, as tibidio patri omnipotenti, in unitate spiritus sanctus, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Recepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, all demus dicere. Atelos fraquies ingelit, sancti vigetum orentum, adveniat regnum tu. Fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Alem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et imite nobis debite nostra, 
Sicus et nos dimitimus de victoribus nos Christ. Et ne nos dinucas in etationem. Sed libera nos. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are to and protect us, and glory are in Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Prayer after communion. I give you thanks, Holy Lord, Father Almighty, everlasting God, who has condescended to feed me a sinner, your unworthy servant, for no merits of my own, but only out of the goodness of your great mercy, with the precious body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray you that this Holy Communion may be to me not guilt for punishment, but a saving intercession for pardon. Let it be to me an armor of faith and a shield of goodwill. Let it be to me 
a casting out of vices, a driving away of all evil desires and fleshly lusts, an increase of charity, patience, humility, obedience, and all virtues, a firm defense against the plots of all enemies, both seen and unseen, a perfect quieting of all motions of sin, both in my flesh and in my spirit, a firm cleaving unto you, the only and true God, and at the end of my life, a happy death. And I pray through your compassion to bring me a sinner to that great feast where you with your Son and the Holy Spirit are to your holy ones, true light, full satisfaction, everlasting joy, consummate pleasure, and perfect happiness. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Renewed by this heavenly sacrament, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who honor our Lady Queen of Nigeria may follow Christ faithfully, provide for the needs of the church, and work for a just and peaceful society in unity of mind and heart. True Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, we thank God for this beautiful day. We thank God for our country, Nigeria. We thank God for the gift of this nation. We thank God for the gift of each other. Though of different tongues, of diverse cultural heritages, we thank God for the unity we share amidst our diversity. And so as we pray for our country, we continue to thank God for the numerous men and women who serve God and nation with their talents. And so we thank God for our liturgical functionaries. Thank you for making our time. Thank you for being part of our Eucharistic celebration. And for the management and staff of Royal Roots Television, we say thank you for what you do, making it possible for us to celebrate together at the Eucharistic table every Sunday. May the Lord, who makes all things beautiful, continue to bless you now and forever through Christ our Lord. And for you, our viewers, thank you for being part of this celebration. Once again, I want to believe you've been richly blessed by this opportunity which the Lord has blessed you with. And I pray that you in turn will continue to bless others by being the light of the earth and the salt of the earth. May this be your joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God 
and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go forth in the peace and love of Christ. Oh, 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 oh,